Former Idaho Governor and Interior Secretary Cecil Andrus says he will not run for the U.S. Senate next year against Jim McClure, but might consider another run for governor in 1986. Tonight on Idaho Reports, we'll cover the Andrus announcement and do some speculating about who might run against McClure next year. That's tonight here on Idaho Reports on Public Television. The funding for this program is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Friends of 4, 10, and 12. I've looked at it uh, long and hard. Uh, I ask you to remember that Carol and I came home immediately after our stint in Washington, D.C. to be with our family and our friends and, and live in the area that we love. And for those reasons and others, I will not be a candidate for the United States Senate next year. Democrat Andrus won't challenge James McClure. Who will? That story tonight. Good evening. For the Democratic Party faithful in Idaho, there was some good news and some bad news today. The bad news, as some Democrats might see it, former Governor and Interior Secretary Cecil Andrus won't be running for the United States Senate against Republican James McClure next year. The good news, again from the viewpoint of many Democrats, is that Andrus is clearly thinking of running for governor again in 1986. Andrus made all of this known earlier today at an Idaho Press Club luncheon here in Boise. Speculation has been growing since he returned to Idaho in 1981 that Andrus would challenge McClure when the two-term Republican seeks re-election next year. McClure is, of course, the influential chairman of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. As chairman of the Republican Conference in the Senate, he is the third-ranking GOP senator. He has been prominently mentioned as a candidate for the Senate's majority leader's job to succeed Senator Howard Baker of Tennessee when he retires. McClure is also very popular in Idaho. He carried every county in this state and captured 68% of the vote when he last won, won election in 1978. So with Andrus out of the picture as of today, who will Democrats field against McClure? That's our story tonight. We'll be talking in a moment with the state Democratic Party chairman and with two journalists who keep close tabs on such things. The only real reason Cecil Andrus gave today for not taking on Jim McClure next year is his personal desire to stay in Idaho. He says McClure is more vulnerable than ever before, and he told reporters today some of the reasons. If you look at uh, the difference between what is said and what is done, uh, uh, Senator McClure has become a very l strong liberal in the fiscal area. Voted, and I would not have to raise the debt ceiling in America to above a trillion dollars, has voted to, to maintain a budget that brings about deficits of more than $200 billion a year. A $200 billion a year deficit in the out year is insanity. Yet the votes are there to sustain that budget. In the areas of the sale of public lands, uh, Senator McClure has been uh, right on target when he said he would oppose the administration's bill that would give us the right to give them the right to sell the Forest Service land. But he's been surprisingly quiet when it comes to the sale of the BLM lands that are already proposed out there. That could very well be an issue. But the issue that will cut across all lines, both the Democrats and Republicans, north, south, east, and west, is the deregulation of natural gas. You haven't heard anything about it here. I've watched the press, and I haven't seen a great deal, but there's a bill in his committee right now to deregulate old gas. There are 94,000 households in South Idaho and 14,000 households in North Idaho that use natural gas to heat. Round that off, if you will, and let's say there's 110,000 families. Two voters in each of those houses. 220,000 people who are going to have their gas bill raised every month if he does not hold that bill in committee. Now, if that bill comes out as drafted and with his blessing, it's going to be the, it's going to be the strongest issue that uh, the senator has ever had to face. With his own candidacy ruled out, Andrus provided reporters with a list of Democrats he believes could challenge McClure. 
Obviously, Governor John Evans would be a very strong candidate to run against Jim McClure, as would Mike Mitchell, Larry LaRocco, Senator John Peavy, Senator Twilliger, who's here today. Uh, Vernon Lannon from Shoshone County has expressed interest in it, would be another uh, tiger on the campaign trail. So with the issues that are there, the Democratic Party will in fact mount a very strong campaign for that Senate seat. At the top of the list, Andrew said, is the governor, but will he run? Well, I have talked to the governor, yes. I do not speak to the governor, and I would, I would just respectfully decline to respond and let him answer that, but uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Coop, uh, what, what his response will be. But you said, wh who would be the strongest? He obviously would. But the others that I named in that list uh, would be equally, well, they would be strong candidates. His name familiarity would overshadow all of theirs. Some political observers believe McClure's Democratic challenger will be in it more for the exposure than for any real chance of winning. But Andrew says that's not likely. Well, I don't know of anyone that would invest their time and their money the way it takes to win a statewide political race just for the experience. And let me tell you, I do not recommend that. That's an experience that you don't need to <coughs> run and lose. Uh, but uh, I've, I've had it both ways, so I speak with a little experience. No, I, I, don't, I don't think that, that would be the case at all. Uh, I, I, I stand on what I said. Uh, Jim McClure is a friend of mine, but I, I, I think that Jim McClure is more vulnerable right now than he's ever been in his political life. With the Senate race ruled out, Andrus was asked about his other political possibilities. I honestly cannot answer that question today as to whether I will or will not be a candidate for statewide office. But I will say to you that the highest level of personal satisfaction from a job has come to me while I serve this state and the people of this state as governor. Uh, yes, I would be interested in, in doing that again if the people wanted me to. But uh, we're three years away from that such a race and that type of race, and, and we have to have some time to see whether, in fact, uh, I will be a candidate. But interested? Yes, I'm interested. Democratic Governor John Evans, who was once Andrus's lieutenant governor, was asked today about Andrus's observation that he would be the strongest candidate against Jim McClure. Well, I'm very, I, I'm very much complimented uh, by uh, my good friend Cecil Andrus in uh, recommending to me. I, I signed a contract with the people of the state of Idaho to be governor for these four years, and I intend to be the very best governor. Now for some official Democratic Party reaction to today's political developments, and for that we turn to Mel Morgan, a longtime Democratic Party operative in Idaho and just recently elected Idaho Democratic Party chairman. Mr. Morgan, is there an obvious Democratic candidate? Well, I think there are several viable candidates out there, uh, some in the list that the, that the governor uh, talked about, and when I say the word governor, I refer to Cecil Andrus. I like the sound of that. And uh, I think of, of the candidates that he's discussed, there are a couple that I have talked to that he obviously hasn't talked to. One is a gentleman named Pete Bush in Lewiston who is a retired Marine colonel, about in his late 40s, uh, was in John Glenn's squadron, who is a political neophyte but is interested in getting into the race. I don't think there's any real dearth of candidates. I think one of the things the party has to do is show the viability of a party base and able to raise the funds to run a good senatorial race. I think we can do that. But lacking the name identification of a Cecil Andrus or a John Evans, can any of those people that, uh, that Andrus mentioned really run a credible, not to mention successful, campaign against someone as apparently as entrenched as Jim McClure is? Well, I think the one name that comes to mind that could do that is John Peavy from Cary, who has expressed desires to go on the national scene. Uh, he comes from a long political family, a, a background of both Republicans and Democrats, and I think he would be a viable candidate. Uh, I can't tell you that he's going to run for sure, but we have discussed it, and he certainly has not shut the door. Is, uh, is Jim McClure as vulnerable as uh, Cecil Andrews seems to think he is? Well, I think any political candidate that's running for office is vulnerable. I don't know whether he's as vulnerable as the governor thinks he is, but... Uh, 
he does have some vulnerability. Any, anybody running for office has that. Let me ask you finally, Mr. Morgan, when does, uh, when does someone, whoever is going to run, make this race, when do they need to make their intentions known in order to be able to mount the kind of a campaign that it'll, it'll take to uh, unseat such an influential, important Republican senator? Well, I think, the, I think Governor Andrus answered that at his news conference, which didn't happen to be on your tape, but uh, uh, I think sometime mid-summer that announcement must be made. I've just returned from a tour of the North. And I can tell you the, that the Democrats are alive and well up there. Uh, they're interested in who's going to run for the Senate, and I can assure you that I'm interested in having a successful candidate. I have talked to uh, several people. One name stands out that nobody's discussed, and that's Margie Ruth Moon, who is a longtime popular vote getter in the state of Idaho, who uh, might entertain to enter into this race. Have you talked to her about that? I haven't talked to her personally about it. I've talked to some people around her, and I will be talking to her the first thing tomorrow. Mr. Morgan, we'll come back in a moment. Thank you. Turn now to the view of a couple of journalists who cover these things, and our view from southeastern Idaho tonight comes from Randy Staples, who has covered politics and is now the editorial page editor of the Idaho State Journal newspaper in Pocatello. Mr. Staples is with us tonight at public station KISU in Pocatello. Randy, if you were uh, a United States Senator seeking re-election in 19 months, wouldn't you like to have Jim McClure's political problems? <laughs> McClure, I think, is about as entrenched, is, is very close to being as entrenched as, uh, as you can be in Idaho. I think that some of the problems that have been mentioned up to this point are, you know, just, just minor irritations. I, offhand, I don't see any really major problems that McClure has going into it at this point. Assess his standing for me, if you will, in your part of the state, southeastern Idaho. Probably pretty high. A little bit less than Pocatello, of course, because Pocatello is a little bit more democratic than most, south, than most of southeastern Idaho. But he's pretty strong throughout this part of the state, as, uh, uh, throughout eastern Idaho, as, as he is in most of the rest of the state. Did, uh, did C. Sandris' announcement today surprise you in any way? Not at all. I think most of the people that I've talked to seem to be of the opinion that that he would not want to run for office again until about 1986, that his most probable uh, run would be for governor at that time. His next most probable, if he wanted to go for the Senate at all, might be to run against Steve Sims at that point. And I haven't talked to anyone for a long time now that seriously thought he'd wind up running against McClure. Well, you heard, heard Mel Morgan and Andrus talk about the possible candidates. Do you see anyone in that list that can mount, uh, what you know, know, know about them at this point, who can mount really a credible campaign against uh, such an entrenched senator? Well, I, I think several of them could run a credible campaign. Whether they could run a winning campaign would be something else. Uh, I, don't th I don't see any of, them on, any of those on the list, probably even including the governor, who's fairly strong in the state, uh, who stands, I think, a better than even chance, or even an even chance of, of beating McClure. Even Andrus, I think, probably stands no, would have, would have stood no better than, than a 50-50 chance. Okay, Randy, we'll come back in a moment. Thank you. Let's turn now for another view from a political reporter, this one from southwestern Idaho. For that, we talked to Rod Grammer, who is the political editor of the Idaho Statesman newspaper in Boise. Is Jim McClure as vulnerable as he's ever been, Rod? I, I don't think so, Mark. Uh, as Mel said, uh, all politicians are vulnerable. Uh, anyone can be beaten uh, in a political race. But uh, I don't see any of the issues that uh, Governor Andrus pointed out today, uh, uh, the kind of issues that uh, will get McClure defeated. I think the natural gas issue, which he raised, is a very good issue. Uh, but uh, I think that somehow McClure would cover his uh, bets on that issue as well. I want to come back to that natural gas question in a moment. Let me ask you the same question I put to Randy Staples. Does, uh, does that list of candidates that's being talked about, is there a credible candidate on that list? Well, I think some of them are, are more credible than others. I think probably the two best would probably be Ron Twilliger and, and John Peavy, notwithstanding uh, the governor. But uh, I agree with Randy there. I don't think that, uh, I think both of those uh, uh, gentlemen would have a very difficult time beating uh, Jim McClure at this point. Well, how, how do you assess McClure's standing in this part of the state? McClure is, is one of the most popular politicians, I think, not only here, but is, uh, across Idaho. Uh, he's, uh, he seems to be one of those people that uh, really 
he doesn't turn anyone off, he doesn't turn people on like a Steve Sims or, or maybe a Frank Church or a Cecil Andrus, but it, he has a strong core of support that I think will stick with him. Rod, uh, Andrus said today that uh, he thought a campaign could be mounted, a good campaign could be mounted if it were run right, I think is the term he used, for a half a million dollars. We just saw a three million dollar Senate race uh, two years ago in this state. Is a half a million dollars going to be near enough money against Jim McClure? Well, I asked Andrus that question at the press club today and I was quite surprised with his answer. I, I really don't see how you can run a campaign against Jim McClure for 500000 my other thought on that is that Jim McClure is always going to be able to raise more money than you are and uh, I think he will raise as much money as it will take to get elected and uh, if, if his opponent raises 500,000 he may raise 700,000 if his opponent goes to a million he may go to 1.5 million I think he'll always have enough money to do the job well, let me uh, handicap this and uh, with the caveat that we're 19 months away from any election. Uh, is Jim McClure in really good shape today? Oh, yeah. I think he is, especially with the announcement that Cecil Andrus won't run against him because Cecil Andrus was the best chance the Democrats had at knocking him off. Okay, let me open this up and go back to uh, Mel Morgan. Uh, do you want to rebut anything you've heard to this point, Mr. Morgan? Well, it seems to me that you gentlemen are burying us a little quickly. Uh, we're alive and well. We'll field a candidate and uh, I would be the first to admit that Jim McClure is a good, solid senator. I consider him a master politician, but we also have some chips on our side. We'll come up with a credible candidate and we'll run a tough race against him. How about the money question? Well, I don't agree with the governor either on, uh, on the 500000 I don't think you can run a good race for $500,000. Uh, I think money will come to whoever the candidate may be if it's raised right. Uh, I do think that uh, the campaign must be run properly, but there are a lot of there are a lot of polls, so to speak, around that uh, that can run a credible campaign. And uh, not that I want to run it. I've had little experience in fighting losing battles a time or two. But uh, I think I think we'll uh, we'll find the candidate. I'm still searching, and I've got the rest of the state to make before any announcement is made, and we'll come up with a credible candidate. I like Marjorie Ruth Moon. Rod, your reaction to the state treasurer? Well, I think Marjorie would be a strong candidate because she has statewide name identification. She's been in politics a long time, has a winning record. I, uh, I think she would still have some of the same difficulties as some of the other candidates, but prob maybe less so because of her name identification. Randy Staples, how about Marjorie Ruth Moon? Well, I think her name identification is very good, and that's a good plus. But on the other hand, she hasn't been involved in the kind of race that, uh, that a race against McClure would involve. Uh, the race for state treasurers, and all of those in the past, have been relatively low-profile races. They haven't involved uh, violent exchanges of views on very controversial subjects. Uh, they, haven't in, they haven't required Idaho voters to make the kind of, of difficult choice that would be involved in, in this case. I'm not sure that she would be able to, as popular as she has been, I'm not sure that she would be able to sway enough, nearly enough, McClure voters away from, uh, away from McClure. Well, l let me ask you what maybe to a reporter who covers these things all the time is a really obvious question. Why is Jim McClure in such good shape? Well, he's, he is probably uh, stuck very close to the, to the average viewpoint of, of the average Idahoan most of the time. He hasn't, uh, he hasn't violated uh, their sense of, of either of propriety or of ideology very much. He's, he has not irritated anyone, as Rod pointed out. Uh, he comes across as uh, a person that, that most Idahoans like, both philosophically and personally. Let me ask you the money question, Randy. Uh, we saw that $3 million Sims Church Senate race just a couple of years ago. Presumably, uh, Senator McClure would be able to raise at least as much money as, as Frank Church did. Uh, is a half a million or somewhere even a little bit more than that enough to, to mount a credible campaign? Well, I, I have to agree with both Mel and Rod. I don't think a half million is going to come anywhere close to it. I think the, the day of the campaign, the Senate campaign of that size, even in Idaho, is long since passed, and unless you're talking about a campaign that isn't credible in the first place. Certainly, you would, in order to beat some an, a fairly entrenched incumbent like McClure, you would have to mount a campaign of such strength that it would have that, that McClure would simply have to be outspent, and outspent pretty dramatically. 
and there you're talking, you're getting into the multi-million dollar range, I think. Let me ask you just for your quick reaction, Randy, to the two issues that uh, uh, former Governor Andrus raised as a uh, as the kind of issues that could uh, be difficult for Jim McClure to deal with. One of them was the Rod mentioned the natural gas issue. Is that the kind of issue that will that will make much difference in Idaho? I don't think so, unless unless something very dramatic were to happen. If uh, Idahoans were to see a few months before the election their gas bill suddenly double or triple or quadruple, that might be one thing. But if they see a gradual rise over a period of time and there isn't an obvious apparent cause and effect between what, what Senator McClure does and their gas bills, I don't think that's going to be the kind of issue that's going to bring them out in droves. It's neither the kind of pocketbook issue that where it's an obvious cause and effect nor is it the, uh, the kind of emotional gut issue that people can, can jump up and down about. Rod, you agree? Yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, if McClure could get tied to that issue, I think that it would be the kind of issue that could hurt him very badly. But it seems to me that there are ways even a chairman of the committee can get around that. I think we even saw Frank Church in certain ways put some distance between him and some unpopular foreign affairs issues. Mr. Morgan, how about that issue? Well, I think it's a valid issue. I don't agree with either one of these gentlemen. If your gas bill doubles and your phone bill doubles and your taxes double, the prevailing politician is going to have a problem with that. I don't say that'll beat him, but it, it would be a very effective campaign tool. How about uh, former Governor Anderson's comment about uh, McClure being a liberal spender, uh, being one who's helped run up the federal deficit to such a, a level? I think there's some validity to that. Uh, I think you could even call the president a liberal spender at this point. When you're talking about a trillion dollar budget, it's, a, it's of a magnitude that the average man can't and, or woman can't assess. But, but Mel, if I could ask a question. Sure, please, go ahead. I wonder, I wonder how easy it would be uh, to convince the average Idahoan that James McClure, who has campaigned and, and, and spoken all these years as a budget cutter, as a keep the taxes down uh, type of senator and congressman, how easy would it be to convince the average Idahoan that he isn't? Well, I believe that you get back to what I just said. If their, if their gas bill and their phone bill and their taxes go up, somebody's going to take the heat from that. Now, whether it's Jim McClure or not remains to be seen. But you have to remember that whoever's running a credible campaign, that gives them a tool. Let me ask you, uh, finally, then we'll move on uh, back to, back to uh, Andrus's political future. Uh, there's been suggested that, uh, that uh, McClure would like to be the majority leader of the Senate. Does this, does this make it more likely that he will look at that race, do you think, Randy? Uh, at the race for a majority leader? Yes, sir. Yes, I, I think so. I think I'm sure that he's looking at it. Uh, I'm sure that he can't afford to dismiss it. Uh, certainly, as long as he remains a strong candidate for majority leader in the Senate, his effectiveness in the Senate is going to be enhanced. And he probably wouldn't want to dismiss the, that word out of hand in Idaho either, because it, it I'm sure, would tend to uh, uh, to boost his, his to enhance him here. Well, it would give him also, it would seem to me, more time for the politics of the Senate, if you will, as opposed to the politics of Idaho, if he didn't have a Cecil Andrus running against him back home. That's also true. The more, the, the more heavily contested he will be here, the less he'll be able to campaign for majority leader there. And, of course, that's a whole separate campaign that would be going on at the same time. Right. How about that point, Rod? Well, Mark, I understand just this week I was talking to some McClure people who said that uh, the senator is very interested in the majority leader's job, and I think that this will make him even more interested in going after it, even though he does have some concerns about what that will do to his relationship with home. But I think, he, uh, I think he's very interested in it. What does that do uh, in Idaho to uh, Senator McClure? Well, I think that enhances his, his chances of, uh, not that he has any problem at this moment, but uh, it, uh, the plus would probably be the fact that he is the majority leader. The minuses would be the fact that he's neglecting Idaho to take care of the nation's jobs. Uh, how the voter views that, I'm really not sure at this point. Rod, you want to say something else? I, I, I want to do, uh, turn back now to, uh, to Andrus's uh, future political plans first and ask, uh, ask you, Rod, is he as popular as he as he was when he left Idaho back in 1976 to become the Interior Secretary? 
Well, Mark, I think that's difficult to say, but I, I certainly think it would be fair to say he's one of the most popular people in the state of Idaho right now. Um, uh, of course, you know, serving in the Carter administration, uh, you get some scars by doing that. And if you ran for office again, some of those things would be right up. But I think he's right up there probably with McClure as one of the most popular uh, figures in the state. Mr. Morgan? Well, I agree with Rod. I think he's a very viable candidate for whatever he would try to run for. Hopefully he would run for governor as far as I'm concerned. I'd like to see that happen. Randy, what well, about uh, Anderson's popularity? Well, I think he still is fairly popular. I don't think that he is as popular now as he was when he left office as governor. And I, I imagine that, I think that that had almost entirely to do with his uh, service as interior secretary. He did some un unpopular things as interior secretary, unpopular in Idaho. And, and simply serving with Carter did not, uh, did not help his standing in the state. On the other hand, by, 1970, by 1986, he will have been back in the state for, eight, for six years, and he would have had plenty of time to mend quite a few fences, and he's very, very good at that. So I imagine that by that time, it would not be that great a problem. Do you see him as a strong candidate for governor somewhere in the future? He could well be. Uh, he, he made some uh, pretty strong t attacks, maybe some of the strongest he's ever made today on, on the current Interior Secretary, James Watt. Not being in the position of being a, a candidate who's running for an office, would you expect him to be more outspoken now? Oh, I expect that he would be. I, I'm not sure that he was really in the position of a candidate running for office. Uh, well, over the last at least had months. the perception that he might be a candidate. Right. I expect that he may well be, uh, particularly as he begins to make up his mind what, if anything, he wants to do in 1986. Uh, each of those kinds of statements give him an, continue to give him an identity and uh, forge his own position, and he may well be able to turn this into a political asset for his use later on. Could I jump in for Certainly. a minute? Uh, it's my opinion that you saw the kickoff of the governor's campaign today. Uh, he may deny that, but uh, I think from here on in, you're going to see Cecil Andrus campaigning for office in his own inimitable way. As far as his popularity is concerned, I think the last measure was like 78 percent. Maybe he's dropped to 70 or 69, but he's still a very popular figure. I've been around the state with him, not at Democratic functions, at Republican and Democratic functions. He gets a standing ovation wherever he goes. He's still a very popular man and a viable candidate. Would, what would an Andrus candidacy, and again, this is highly speculative, I know, Rod, what would an Andrus candidacy do for the Democratic Party in general? Well, Mark, I think that uh, the Democratic Party has several bright stars coming up, uh, but right now uh, they need a very viable candidate for 1986 for governor as well as the United States Senator. Uh, candidacy with Andrus in it would uh, fill one of those slots and uh, make the other slot a little bit more attractive for another young Democrat or perhaps the governor, uh, present governor, to run for. Quick comment on that, Mr. Morgan? I agree with Rod. I think that's very true. Okay. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much, Mel Morgan, for joining us tonight in uh, Boise, and Rod Grammer, thank you. Randy Staples, thank you for joining us in Pocatello. We appreciate it. That's our time for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow with other news permitting an update on the Washington Public Power Supply System's bonding problems at a big date tomorrow and possibly some big news from that. We'll see you then. I'm Mark Johnson. Good night. This program is produced by the Idaho Educational Public Broadcasting System, which is solely responsible for its content. The funding for this program is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and the Friends of 4, 10, and 12.